So we've been doing now for a class and a half, we've been really looking at history a lot. And we've been looking at maps and graphs. And then we've been looking at articles like this, right? Okay. Now we're going to have a little change of pace. And now we're going to spend some time on poetry. Usually one poem on the task. And it's usually kind of challenging. It's not usually so contemporary. So I want them to have some exposure to it. It's a little hard because it's mostly informational text, so you can't do a lot on poetry, but you also want to have them have some familiarity and comfort with it. OK, can someone read the first stanza? This is called a stanza. And what does that mean, hold fast? It's not giving up. Hold fast, hold on. Can someone read the first stanza out loud? Oh, that's the dream of when dream die. Life is broken. Life is a broken thing where that cannot die. Can someone read the second stanza? Hold oh, fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. Okay. So, what pictures are you getting from this poem? What, men, what mental images is the poet giving you? Uh, empty field, an empty field frozen this snow. OK. We started off by looking at a much easier poem. We looked at Langston Hughes' poem. It's a nice, simple poem, so they were kind of able to put it into their own words, but they were also able to look at the images. So we have a field frozen with snow. And what else? A person's feelings are broken. OK and a bird with a broken wing. What are those, I mean, what kind of feelings do you get from those pictures? Yeah, I mean, when you see a bird that has a broken wing, how do you feel? It's sad. Sad. You want a sad feeling. You, maybe you want to help the bird, OK? And what about life is a barren field frozen with snow? What feeling do you get it's from that? It's just the like hold on I to your it. dream. Like what do you it's have like surrounding you? Your dreams are on a standstill. OK, nice. So it's like your dreams are, nothing's moving, right? It's frozen. OK, your dreams are at a standstill, OK? So you're getting associations, right, that come with the picture, right? And that's how poetry works a lot. There's, there's a picture, and there's kind of some associations that the poet can expect you to have with that picture, and also some feelings. So you guys are starting to do the work of analyzing poetry. You're interpreting it. And then we also, you guys are putting what he's saying, you're putting it into your own words, right? You're saying it to yourself, which is a fancy word for that is paraphrasing. So you're paraphrasing the poet, and that's a way of explaining it to yourself. What does he say? That was kind of the warm-up practice since 1619. is a much harder poem. It's much more kind of mysterious what she's talking about. So I introduced some new strategies. So I look at the poem, and the first thing I notice is the title. OK? Since 1619. And I go, huh, that was a long time ago. I wonder what happened in, in 1619. Does anybody know? That's right. First Africans brought to America as slaves. So that gives me a clue maybe what Margaret Walker is going to be talking about here in this poem. I do a think aloud so that I can kind of get them started seeing how an expert reader starts taking the poem apart, analyzing it, trying to figure out what it's about. How many years since 1619 have I been singing spirituals? Okay, spirituals 
is making me think of gospel and maybe songs that slaves used to sing um, to sort of keep hope. So how many years since 1619 have I been singing spirituals? How long have I been praising God and singing hallelujah? So one thing that is occurring to me as I read is that Margaret Walker is not writing as herself because Margaret Walker wasn't alive in 1619. She was from the 30s, okay? So she's not really writing as herself. She's writing kind of as a representative of her people. That's what I think, okay? Between knowing her bio and knowing the title of the poem, okay? So how many years since 1619 have I been singing spirituals? How long have I been praising God and singing hallelujah? Wow, I'm noticing something now, is that these are all questions. And they all start with this idea of, wow, how long, how many years? So I'm feeling like she's thinking, <clears throat> wow, this has been a long time, right? And also noticing that she's que asking questions. I wonder, is she asking herself or is she asking somebody else? Okay, so maybe she's kind of writing as, you know, I am representing my people, right? And then I'm asking these questions. How long have I been hated and hating? Huh. Okay, maybe that refers to racism. How long have I been living in hell for heaven? Okay, I'm not, sh I really am not sure what this means, but I see that there's, there's three references to religion here. So whatever she's trying to say, it has a little bit to do with religion. So what are the images that we're getting? What are the pictures that we're getting? She's being tortured. Maybe think, some people have been tortured. What makes you say that? Like how long I've been living in hell for heaven. Okay, so this makes you think of torture. Okay. And plus when they, they're hating on them, they're making them Hated and hating. Okay. Praying for freedom. I'm sorry? Praying for freedom. Praying for freedom. Okay, yeah. So we have, we have religion here. So praying for freedom. And we know this is referring to slavery, so maybe it's about praying she's for freedom. She's a little upset about slavery. <clears throat> she's upset. What makes you think that she's upset? Because she's because they are slaves. Sorry, slave. Okay, so she's upset about slavery. It's talking about hatred, right? So the poet's upset. Okay. So yes, yeah. how long have I been seeing spirituals? How long have I been praising God and singing hallelujah? She's, how long I, have I been hated and hating? Like when is it gonna stop? When is it gonna stop? You guys are good. So from what we've been saying so far, and I think you're right, how is she starting this off? What is, this, what is she talking about in this poem? And how does she feel? Sad. Sad, maybe. Depressed. Depressed. Frustrated. Frustrated. Hopeless. Okay. All right. So that's a really good start. I'm going to ask you to, if, you ha if you're looking at the poem, all right, just turn it over for a minute. We're going to sort of look at some of the images on their own before we go back to the poem. Okay. So at the top it says, when will the scales fall away from my eyes? Angel, what does that mean? Eyes are being covered. That's right. When will I see? When will my eyes stop being covered? When will the scales fall away from my eyes? Okay. Days of wrath. You hear that kind of, it's like a biblical term. What does that mean, the days of wrath? Anger. Days of anger. So if English is not your first language, you're wondering what is this word? Wrath. What does it mean, Natasha? Uh, hatred. 
Richard? Anger. Anger. Okay. So what are the days of wrath? We hear about it from the Bible. What does that mean? The days of wrath will come. Punishment. Punishment from where? From God. From God. Okay. Maybe revolution. Could mean revolution. Anything else? Okay, yeah. The days of wrath, right? The judgment day to come. Then there's two hard ones. Paltry pittances. A pittance means something that's very small and unimportant. And then it says cold concessions, right? So when you make a concession, you go, all right, Natasha. All right, you can, you can have it your way, OK? But when I, what does it mean when someone is cold? She was cold to me. What does that mean? Attitude. Attitude, right? So uh, I came up to Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. How are you now? Act coldly to me. Right, OK. She's acting cold. Like, who are you? I don't want to talk to you. OK. So it's a concession, but it's like, all right, Natasha. All right, go ahead. OK. What are these images? What do they call up for you? What feelings do you get from these? They're dark. They're a war. A war. A war. Anything else? Desperation. Desperation, maybe. Yeah, because sometimes you can go to war because you're desperate. There's nothing else I can do now. It's time to go to war. OK? OK, so with those in mind, right? Now we're going to read the whole poem. So I'm going to read this poem out loud, and then we're going to do a jigsaw read, OK? Since 1619. How many years since 1619 have I been singing spirituals? How long have I been praising God and singing hallelujah? How long have I been hated and hating? How long have I been living in hell for heaven? When will I see my brother's face wearing another color? When will I be ready to die in an honest fight? When will I be conscious of the struggle now to do or to die? When will these scales fall away from my eyes? What will I say when the days of wrath descend? When the money gods take my life away? When the death knell sounds and peace is a flag of far-flung blood and filth? When will I understand the cheated and the cheaters, their paltry pittances and cold concessions to my pride? When will I burst from my kennel an angry mongrel, lean and hungry and tired of my dry bones and years? OK, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to talk about it a little more, and then we'll do a final reading. So Arnita, I need your help. One, two, three, four. So you guys are a group. Okay, and you guys are responsible for stanza number one, saying what it means, paraphrasing it. Okay, you guys are doing stanza number two. Okay, and Arnita's going to help you. Okay, you guys are doing stanza number three. You guys are doing stanza number four. So what's your job? Your job is to say, what do I think the poet is saying? OK? And then once you've done that, your group is going to read your stanza together, OK? In unison, with feeling. How many years since 1619 have I been singing the spirituals? How long have I been praising God and singing hallelujah? How long have I been hating and hating? How long have I been living in hell for heaven? When will I see my brother's face wearing another color? When will I be ready to die and not a smile? When will I be conscious of my struggles, now to do or to die? When will these scales fall away from my eyes? What will you say when the days of wrath descend? When the money gods take my life away? When the death nail sounds and peace is a flag far from the When will 
I understand the cheated and the cheaters, their paltry pittances and cold concessions to my pride. When will I burst from my kettle in angry mongrel, lean and hungry and tired of my dry bones and ears? That was great, you guys. <laughs> okay, that was the performance. Let's just quickly go around and see how people interpreted their stanza. So stanza one, what did you, what's she trying to say there? How long has she been religious? Okay, yeah, how long has she been religious, right? She's still living in hatred. She's still living in hatred. Okay, how long have I been religious? To the Bible and everything. It's not supposed to be the way she's living. Yeah, really good interpretation. Absolutely. Yeah. I've been so religious, but look, I'm still in this hellish situation. Mm -hmm. right. What about you guys? What did you make out of stanza number two? And Natasha said breaking the color barrier. Breaking the color barrier. Okay. When will the color barrier be broken? Great. What about you guys? Basically, when you came over with me, they won't judge me, they just make me fall. Okay. And when she says money, guys, basically, like, her slave or, like, okay. other people take on their clothing. Okay. Um, anything else you want to add? When, okay, and then when they said the death, death knell, uh -huh. which we basically, like, the feeling of death, like, when is it going to come, like, that's what brings in the night. Uh-huh. Basically, when you came on it. Right. Um, but the last one, there's, like, there's no peace. Like, okay. There's no peace, it's just blood and filth, basically. Okay. And she sees no peace. Okay. Wonderful. All right, and what about stanza four? What are we saying? The one where she understands why the slave owners are treating her the way they do. Okay. What are those last two lines suggesting? What does she want to say there? She's tired and angry and ready to lash out. Okay. Tired and angry and ready to lash out. Okay. So. This is a really difficult poem, and I felt like you guys really cracked it open.